Hey everyone, Tony Winston here. I'd like to introduce you uh, to your new jazz instructor, Frederick Chopin. Uh, I've been working on uh, the first ballad. Well, that's Bach there. Where's, where's Chopin? There he is, Chopin, uh, the very first ballad. And I, I can't think of a single piece by Chopin that I can't pull a little bit of jazz out of. So I just wanted to uh, show you a few spots in this one piece. Uh, I thought it might be interesting to you. So the first part comes over here on the, how oh, about the third page here? We're going like this. Right there is what is the riff we're going to do, this one. And then we, I think he does it again. starts the hard stuff all that this is an interesting run here okay so he's got a C minor chord here and then puts the A in there so what is that chord really it's either C minor 6 or A minor 7 flat 5 and what's he doing up top here okay you know um, for an A minor seventh chord, if we use the Locrian mode, that would be the B flat major scale. So F is okay in there. And then he hits this. So that's kind of like a D7 chord. And then takes it up to the next octave. And it's actually, you know, like a sharp nine chord. All right, so if that's not jazz, I don't know what is. Yeah. So let me show you how to use this in a song. Um, what was I thinking of today? Oh, let's do um, like Alone Together. Or maybe Yesterday's would be good. So. OK, so I'm going to have to transpose it because now I've got E minor 7th. So let's see, instead of starting here, I'm going to start here. And then I'm going to hit this part of an A7 chord. And then the sharp nine portion of it right there. Uh, so. Now this song is in six, four times. So that's kind of like a three, four type of thing. Um, so can we use this in a piece that's in four, four? I, I think so. Uh, let's see how it will work out. Dun, 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 dun. that all right let's see it seems to work let's try it a little bit faster so I think uh, what I'm trying to do in my mind is come in on beat two on the eat oh, I think it's beat two two Two, right there's where we're gonna start the riff. Da, 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 da. I can do it in two octaves like Chopin did, maybe. <laughs> yeah. All right, now move on to another page here that has some good stuff in it. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, right on the next page, actually. He does these long arpeggios like this. Yeah, let me just do it slowly, so. And then he goes to this augmented chord and does the same kind of riff. Usually it's a little, it's a, not as big, though. It's like... someplace from there so I was thinking you know where I found a couple places I could use this uh, but one was um, in a nice work if you can get it so uh, in the bridge uh -huh. <laughs> 
Yeah, so, you know, I'm also working on the, my Art Tatum riffs. Uh, those two finger runs are just so awesome. Let me show you this riff kind of in slow motion. So, you know, you got to follow the fingering. And this is why classical music is, I think, really important. Because the piano players of this era, you know, Chopin, you know, through, I don't know, maybe uh, Rachmaninoff, I mean, they were masters of piano technique. And there are all kinds of things you can do with your fingers that you're not doing because you haven't studied classical music. And I realize there's not time for everything, but, you know, uh, just taking advantage of, 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 you know, some of the ground that's been covered by by these wonderful composers. I mean, they knew how to play the piano in, in ways that I think are slowly kind of being forgotten, at least by jazz players. So here's the riff. It's, uh, and you know, you can do this on any chord. So it's two, five, three, and then, so you skip one there like that. And then, this one. So anyway, where could you use this? I just showed you one place. I had another spot for it. I think it was in uh, Yeah, I don't I can't quite fit it in there. That's what she said last. even just a little bit of it. Yeah. Was there another piece, another? Well, I've covered this one before, but let me, uh, let me go on and cover it a little bit again. All right, this is a pretty hard little thing here. So one thing I've been working on is, you know, this thing goes on for four measures. That's one measure, and you've got to do that four times without screwing it up. And I found a little arm motion kind of helps. But, you know, after about four or five of them, it's like <sighs> something goes wrong. <laughs> You know, another thing about classical music is it's so damn hard that you've got to develop new approaches to practice. And, you know, one thing that, that we do uh, when we're doing a long run, something like, uh, is to do it with stops. It gives your fingers a real chance to learn each little section of it. I'm not sure why it works so well. There's probably a bunch of reasons, but you know that's that's a good practice method. Anyway, the riff I'm talking about comes after this. And that is based on the diminished scale. Well, I won't say it's based on the diminished scale, but every note in it is in the diminished scale. So here's the diminished scale. So let's see, it'll work on a... It'll work on a B diminished, D diminished, F diminished, and A flat diminished. It'll also work, uh, go down a half step from each one of those. It'll all work on B flat dominant seventh, all right? And then instead of a D diminished, it'll work on D flat dominant. It's gonna work on E7, and it's also gonna work on G7. So why don't we try it on G7, okay? Do a little two, five, one. Ah, 
see I went to an altered chord there. I should have gone to this one or this one. So let me try that again. Sounds pretty cool. Probably could do a lot of study on how to incorporate that different starting points and different rhythms. Uh, one other thing I do want to cover, and it's in the uh, my Chopin album book, which is holding up my light right now, so I can't use it. Uh, but it's in the Fantasy Impromptu, and I think I've covered this one before. It's uh, the part where it goes. coming down there that, I mean that is pure jazz it's right here so let's analyze it real quickly we're starting on the third the fifth and then the, I'm gonna call it the flat nine all right because we're thinking about an a flat dominant seventh chord here I think it's G sharp in the music I uh, can't quite remember yet and then you know, it goes back and hits that note again. All right, now what is it in G? So in G, it would be. And what scale is that? It can't be diminished because it wouldn't have an E flat in it. An uh, altered scale, but then there can be no D. Let's see. Uh, you know, there's a D right away. So this just shows that scales are useful up into a certain point. At a, at a higher level, melody has to take over. But really, maybe melody is really the primary thing. The scales are kind of like a secondary thing. And, and that's why we struggle with jazz is because you know, we think about scales more than we think about melody. So this is a great little melody here. So let's use it in blue bossa. I think I did try to do a short on this. I haven't figured out how to do shorts yet. Now that's real square, just putting it right on the beat. I think maybe if I, if I um, displaced it a little bit, it might be cooler. Now, that's another advantage to doing this kind of work. That was not the right riff. I mean, that was based on it, but my fingers went someplace else. And it came out pretty nice, but I'm going to try to do it the way, the way Chopin wrote it here. <laughs> that would have been the best right there. <laughs> I've got work to do. Thanks, everyone.